Well, it was almost like a mini budget on Friday when the GST Council removed 80% of the items from the highest tax bracket, leaving just 50 items under the 28% slab. The government expects the move to cost the exchequer about 20,000 crore rupees. Some brokerages are raising fears of fiscal slippages. On the other hand, some industries are still in the 28% bracket and are up in arms. Construction materials like cement and paint continue to be in the 28% tax slab. Real Estate Developers Association pleading with the government for relief, but top government sources tell us that if cement were to be excluded from the 28% tax slab, it would cost an additional 10,000 crore rupees. That is money the center can ill afford to lose, especially when GST collections continue to remain uncertain. Joining us now to discuss the GST fiscal math uh, with us is Manpreet Badal, the finance minister of Punjab, as well as senior Congress leader. Mr. Badal, thanks very much for joining us uh, on the program. Before I come to you, let me go across to my colleague Kevin Lee, who's standing by with what two top brokerages make of the fiscal deficit target after the sweeping GST overhaul. Kevin. Well, CLSA and Nomura are the two brokerages that have raised concerns over the impact of the recent GST tax cuts on India's fiscal deficit. CLSA believes the move deepens populism and expects more such measures in the run-up to the 2019 elections. It predicts a rise in fiscal issues and the 20,000 crore rupees which will be lost due to tax cuts amounts to 12 basis points of the overall GDP of the country. On the other hand, Nomura is also raising the red flag on the fisc, but it calls the overall impact of the move positive. Nomura expects fiscal deficit this year to remain at 3.5% against the budgeted target of 3.2%. Now, tax collections are already throwing up concerns for the government, and CLSA is estimating that 6,000 crore rupees every month is being lost due to GST, and the central government will be liable to bridge this gap. Nomura also says that tax revenues from GST are a source of uncertainty, but it expects fiscal gains once compliance improves uh, to bring in a positive effect in the long run. All right, Kevin, appreciate you joining us with that. Let's go across now to the Finance Minister of Punjab, Manpreet Badal. Mr. Badal, let me start by asking you, sir, about how concerned you would be about the fiscal position or the macro position today. Because our understanding is that the Fitment Committee had recommended 62 items uh, be up for review, but the GST Council decided to go a step further, in fact, slashing items under the 28% bracket down to 50, which will cost the Exchequer about 20,000 crores. What what was the sense that was given to the GST Council in terms of the tax collections under the GST today? And what is the situation in terms of compensation? Well, a very innocent answer to that question would be that uh, GST is actually a form of tax collection in about 160 countries of the world. Is there a single country which imposes 28% tax on goods? Uh, probably not. Mm. And also reminds me, when I was a very young boy, uh, the income tax slab used to be almost 90% or 95% um, and for the top bracket. But since the rate of income tax has been cut substantially, uh, collections have not gone down. In fact, uh, collections have come up. So what the Congress party was mm. advocating at the GST Council and fr in fact from the start that uh, you know we need to have a relook at this 28 percent uh, this is far too okay. harsh it leads to evasion and we have to take a leap of faith uh, you know because if you hmm. we still have the construction sector uh, these are major job creation yes. sectors so and we also have a uh, the yes. tourism sector at 28%. So any room which is above 7,500 mm. rupees liable to be taxed at 28%. So it actually, so, you know, it's an impediment to job creation. It's an and so it then, also sir, leads to can evasion. we expect? And also, you know. So can we then expect that even sectors like tourism, even sectors like paint and cement will be up for rationalization a few months down the line? Because as you yourself pointed out, collections haven't gone down, collections have been moving up. So perhaps maybe next financial year or even earlier at the start of the calendar year perhaps, would there be a case for a further revision to include things like cement, paints, tourism, etc.? I think uh, the viewpoint which the Congress party holds and people in Punjab hold was uh, that we were rather hasty in actually you know, trying to introduce GST 
we should have actually prepared better, hmm. thought better. Um, sure, but, but that's, that's, a, that's a thing of the past, of the sir. The question, now, the question now, the question now is, and, uh, and, you know, if I may, sir, if I may talk and, about and the road ahead, sir, if I may talk about the road ahead, like, uh, you, you know what? Yeah, you would like you would like the 28% slab to only have the demerit items, which means sin goods essentially, and everything else should move to the lower bracket, which is largely 18%. But if you can give me a sense of the macro picture, sir, because you know the, the finance minister West Bengal came out at the end of the GST council, and I don't know where those numbers are coming from, but that is what he said to us that there is an aggregate loss to the tune of 90,000 crores. Now. What is that number, sir? And, you know, what do you make of that uh, number that was given by Dr. Mitra? Well, uh, you know, I am not a financial expert, but my, my gut feeling is that, uh, and that is the Congress viewpoint as well, that apart from sin goods, if you have uh, an 18% uh, maximum slab, uh, it would lead to greater buoyancy, mm. greater compliance, and uh, it would actually sort out, uh, you know, a, a lot of issues, mm. and it would actually propel, because, you know, the entire construction activity has come to a standstill, um, including, uh, right. when I say construction sector, it also includes tourism, because tourism, A, when I, when I, when I build something, I'm not get, uh, given any yeah. uh, tax credits for it. And after, after that, you know, mm. uh, whatever I, service I give, um, or whatever, it, it's actually charged at 28%. So did you, so Mr. Badal, did the, you know, did the Congress representatives, uh, twice did, the Congress the repre thing. did the Congress representatives, uh, did the Congress representatives put in dissenting notes? Did you put your foot down in the GST Council meeting on the 10th to say that even if it were to cost the Exchequer 10,000 crores, cement, for instance, should be brought from 28 to 18%? Was that the position that the Congress took? Well, uh, that's exactly what we said, that uh, cement, paints and all, it should be brought down to 18%. And the union finance minister then retorted that, uh, you know, we have to be pragmatic sometimes. And my answer mm. to that was that mm. uh, when uh, Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery, uh, it was not a very pragmatic thing to do because, uh, you know, people were needed to work on the mm. farms. And it was actually going against pragmatism. Mm. When uh, John F. Kennedy, he, he, he initiated civil, civil rights to, for Afro-Americans, that was not a pragmatic thing to do. Sir, you're when Mahatma Gandhi uh, sir, you're advocated surely not for equating, abolition you're, of you're surely not equating moving exactly. cement so and paint. Sometimes, you know, you're surely not equating moving cement and paint from the 28% slab to 18% no, no. with abolishing slavery, sir, or, or, or uh, the, the civil rights movement, uh, Mr. Badal. No, 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 no. No, no, no. What, what, what I'm trying to say is India has to become a superpower. And to become hmm. a superpower, you know, we can't have a GST which is structurally flawed. That's all I'm trying to say. You know, sometimes, hmm. uh, you, know, uh, okay. on, you know, you have to sacrifice no, but, uh, pragmatism but you... for, some, for the greater, you know, as, as sure, a communist but do you, party. Do you I can assure your listeners. Let, let me finish. You know, it's, yes. it's not for the sake. It's not for the. It is not for the sake of opposition. You know, you, after all, India belongs to all of us. You know, it, it gives us no, no pleasure that uh, you know the whole system mm. is in a mess. You know, you don't cut your nose nose to spite your face. Uh, but some, you know, sure. and this was this is something which we've been consistently pointing out since the last five months. We did it in Kashmir. We did it in Hyderabad. We were told right. then uh, by the chairman and uh, revenue secretary and who's, hmm. that once the law has been drafted, not a comma can be changed. Yeah. But obviously there is popular hmm. resentment. There are elections around the corner. Yeah. Uh, that could be one reason. Yeah. But, but it's nothing to do with populism. It is some trying to okay. make this country work. And, you know, we were told that once right. GST... Uh, is uh, you know uh, uh, introduced in India, GDP would go go up two hmm. percent. Uh, compliance would go up. It will right. actually be a very easy tax. It's it's one tax, one nation. Yeah. Obviously, nothing has happened, right. and it's just it's not just about the rates itself. 
it's about but the compliance issues, it's about sorry, the GSTN, and so sorry. on and so forth. So, you know, the whole... But, but if I may ask you now, sir, if I, if I may ask you, and you I, I think, I think the, government, the government also does acknowledge the fact that there is a need for cost correction, which is why these decisions have been taken at the level of the GST Council. But if I may ask you, uh, Mr. Badal, to give us some, some sense of what was communicated to members of the GST Council about the macro story, about the GST collections, because uh, the Finance Minister, the Revenue Secretary, saying that the trend is not clear or apparent right now. So uh, was, there, was there some empathy for the center's point of view that, look, we need to keep things like cement, paint, etc., out of 18% because we need to worry about uh, what is coming into our coffers and what's going out of our coffers? So can you give us some sense of what was the rationale presented to the council in terms of the macro story, where we stand on GST collections, how much are states getting by way of compensation? Because I believe the states are being compensated within that 7,500 crore rupees ballpark that we've seen so far. Well, when the GST was introduced, uh, we were told that uh, compensation may not be required. Uh, but uh, the figures which we were shown was that almost every state of India had to be compensated. Mm. Uh, and again, you know, the argument goes back that if you're going to have a flawed GST, then you cannot jump mm. start or kick start the economy. So if you have a GST where compliance issues are sorted out and also the intensity of yeah. compliance, you know, where everybody has mm. to fill in those three returns every transaction has to be uploaded you know 350 right. crore invoices the matching them if that intensity is reduced maybe your network also starts working you know so so you, mr ba mr I, Badal, if, if i could if i could ask you sir copy. simply yeah, yeah. sure no, I, I, I get what you're saying, sir, but if I could ask you, how much has been the compensation to your state, uh, sir? You said every state uh, uh, has required some amount of compensation. What has been the compensation to the state of Punjab, sir? Well, uh, Punjab is a special state because uh, uh, our entire tax base uh, was based on uh, exporting food grains. And because all the purchase tax mm. and all the taxes on food grains were subsumed, you know, we were actually, so Punjab is going to be a net compensation state for the next four and a half years, unless we can, uh, you know, uh, remodel our economy into an industrial economy. Uh, but that okay. was expected. So Punjab okay. it should not matter. But they told us then. Actually, actually we knew. We, we were not naive. We were not foolish that if we subsume food grains, huh. a quarter of our tax base would go. Uh, but... You know, Punjab is used mm. to making sacrifices for the greater good of India. So it really, but we have asked uh, the chief economic advisor because they told us that what they told us was that Punjab was a, uh, a big high consumption state. Uh, the losses would, you know, not right. be so great. In fact, we have asked him uh, even mm. in the council that if you could do a study because I'm I'm a very mm. worried man. You know, Punjab the compensation is about 39 percent. And if this continues, uh, then after okay. four years, what, where would Punjab be? Uh, so, you know, we are going okay. to go very deep into this. But it's embarrassing for Punjab mm. uh, to ask for compensation. I wish mm. if that was not the case. So you're saying that you will need more compensation from, this, uh, from the center. Uh, do you have a number, sir, as, as of today? Well, uh, I think uh, our compensation would be to, to the tune of about roughly 600 crores a month. But as I said, that is because on account of uh, the food grains, you know, which uh, have been subsumed. Initially, Punjab used to, okay. or before GST, we used to charge uh, for wheat and paddy, which was bought by, uh, by FCI. Right. But since uh, under the new GST hmm. regime, we can't do that. Uh, so uh, we, we, Punjab has taken a huge hit. It's a huge hit. Okay. You've taken a huge hit, sir, but of course the center has guaranteed compensation for all states for the next five years. Let me end, sir, by asking you not a question yeah. uh, related to GST, but a question that, well, that is uh, uh, capturing I, can, can mind just, space just, across just, North India, add, sir. Just, uh, yes, please, go ahead.
well uh, you know to, to be uh, not be eligible for compensation uh, punjab would have had to grow at about 60% which is almost impossible right uh, let let me